Hey, this is Gabriel Anderson. Uh, sorry I can't be with you guys in person. I'm currently going to be taking an AP exam during our class, but uh, here's a recording of my presentation. So today I'm talking about uh, The Great Gatsby. So an overview of the plot of this movie. Uh, a Bond salesman, Nick Carraway, arrives in New York in the midst of the Roaring Twenties, which we learned about. Uh, uh, he moves in next door to a wealthy man who we later learn is named Jay Gatsby. And this man ends up pulling him into this plot to win a woman's heart. But with him, Nick is exposed to this world of luxury and this illusory world of the top wealthy 10%. Um, and through this, Nick realizes the American dream is more of a facade than he first imagined. And that ignorance and pleasure are valuable in this uh, type of, type of well-off society. So the time period of the film, it's in period 7. Uh, it's an early part of the Roaring Twenties, like I mentioned earlier, and it's in New York City. So what's accurate and what is not? Uh, the characters are fictional, it's not, it's not based on real people, um, but the technology was accurate, there was no, nothing out of place in terms of that. There were things that were a bit exaggerated at times, but I think that was more so for a uh, effect on, in, in terms of what the viewers watching the movie uh, to add emphasis to certain poignant moments in the story. Uh, there, the ideas of the Roaring Twenties of consumerism and sort of this idea of, you know, the bustling urban life and pursuing the American dream, becoming a self-made man is very, uh, it's a very constant theme in this book as we see, or sorry, in this movie. Uh, and since this movie focuses mainly on fictional characters, uh, everything beyond them is accurate, like I said earlier. So what did I learn about history from this? Well, ideas of past time periods had an effect on how people viewed how society should work and what their va societal values were uh, in terms of the current time period, where, like I was talking about with consumerism, we see that continuity from um, the late 19th century uh, with the rise of big businesses and these large department stores and this new American identity uh, based in consuming material goods and sort of this economic, this new economic uh, idea uh, that tied closely into how society was constructed as seen in this picture where now there's a lot of advertising and there's a lot of uh, looking at products and it's all about getting the latest, you know, new object or new uh, source of entertainment. Uh, and as well, the Roaring Twenties followed World War One, and nationalism, uh, along with the growing consumer culture, sparked the sentiments of this decade, like I was saying earlier. So why I chose this film? Uh, I had already read The Great Gatsby relatively recently, and I'd been recommended to watch the movie by some of my friends, but I never got around to it, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity, seeing that it was on the list. Uh, I haven't really watched any movies based in this time period before, so this was a uh, kind of a first look into a cinematic view of the Roaring Twenties for me. And for the most part, it seemed to pretty well coincide with what I remember learning in history classes. You know, of course, except for the characters, because they're, they're fictional. But yeah, you get what I mean. So overall, I gave the movie a 7 out of 10, because some parts felt needlessly exaggerated, and the film dragged on after the initial plot. Uh, some parts of the book, or the story, I should say, were ignored or changed, uh, which kind of changed the meaning of the story from the original book. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of historical accuracy, it, it was it was okay. Um, and in terms of entertainment, it was pretty entertaining. Uh, but yeah, I think a 7 out of 10 is a pretty fair score for this film. So yeah, that's all I have. Um, thank you for watching. And uh, hope to talk to you guys soon before the end of school. Thank you.